Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. Today I'm going to share with you two recipes that you can use for bonbon fillings. The first one is a raspberry marshmallow and the second one is a basic milk chocolate ganache. These raspberry marshmallows are so good. They taste really fresh and the tart raspberry really balances out the sweetness in the marshmallow. If you haven't seen the decor video that goes along with this recipe, check out that video in the card or in the description below. So I know you guys are going to ask, how long do these fillings last? <laughs> and my rule is that I can't tell you because they haven't been tested. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, this year I plan to get an AW meter, which will read the water activity. So more information on that later. But for now, the recipes that I share for fillings on my channel won't necessarily be formulated for long shelf life. And if you're just getting started learning how to make chocolates, that really shouldn't be your biggest concern. I would say that a safe rule to follow is to make sure to share your chocolates and have them eaten within a week or two after you make them. With that being said, the marshmallow has a high sugar content and low water content, so that filling should last a pretty long time. The ganache is a very basic base recipe and doesn't have any added ingredients to extend shelf life like glucose, and it has fresh cream, so the shelf life for that will be a lot lower than the marshmallow. And if you wanna swap this ganache recipe out for one that's formulated to last a bit longer, that's up to you. All right, so let's get going. Here are the ingredients and supplies that you'll need. For the marshmallow, four sheets of gelatin, a large bowl of cold water, three ounces of unsweetened raspberry puree. Today I'll show you how to make your own using fresh raspberries. 4.5 ounces of caster sugar. This is just fine granulated sugar. You can use regular if you can't find caster. The finer texture helps it to dissolve quicker. Two ounces of dextrose. This isn't as intimidating as it may sound. I'll link where you can buy this on Amazon. 0.35 ounces of freeze-dried raspberry powder. You can buy these freeze-dried whole raspberries at Target, and I'll show you how you can make your own powder, or you can just buy it already powdered. 2.25 ounces of glucose, and 0.25 ounces of lemon juice. It's best to use fresh, but I forgot my lemon, so I'm just using this kind. For the ganache, 12 ounces Kuvichur chocolate. Today I'm using leftover tempered Calibut milk chocolate. Eight ounces of heavy cream. And then you'll need a blender for the puree, along with a fine sieve, a mortar and pestle for the freeze-dried powder, a stand mixer and whisk attachment, and a stick blender, piping bags and clips, a good thermometer, and all the other basic chocolate supplies. So if you have a hard time finding fruit purees or you just don't want to buy them because they can be quite expensive, you can easily make your own. You'll just simply take the fresh raspberries and plop them into the blender. Here I start with one of those double cartons, which is 12 ounces, but I was a little worried I wouldn't have enough, so I added another six ounces and just blend that really good. Then you'll take the blended raspberries and push them through a fine sieve. <laughs> the seeds get in the way, so this takes a bit of patience. It helps to use a little spatula to push the puree through and tapping the sieve down against the container also helps knock it through. Now I pour the strained puree into a pot and set it aside while I prepare a couple other things. Notice I didn't measure the raspberry puree yet. I put all of what my 18 ounces of raspberries created into the pot. You'll see why in a minute. Next, I get my freeze dried raspberries ready since I didn't buy the powder. I'm not worried about measuring anything until the very end because you'll see you lose a lot of weight in seeds. 
I ground down the whole bag, one half at a time. So using the mortar and pestle, you just grind the raspberries down until you get a fine powder. I like to smash them down a bit first and then grind them down in a circular pattern like this. Once you get it ground down, you need to use another fine sieve to get the powder from the seeds. And you can see here that there are so many little seeds. <laughs> Just throw them away and continue sifting. Now I just weigh out my 0.35 ounces of raspberry powder. The marshmallow is a thicker filling and it also contains gelatin, which means it will set up as it cools. This is a softer marshmallow formulated to be pipeable, but you still have to work fairly quick. So before I make the marshmallow, I get my molds and piping bag ready. Today I'm using this round tip to pipe, but you don't have to. You can also just cut the bag. So the first step to making the marshmallow is to start soaking your gelatin sheets in the big bowl of cold water. Just push them in and make sure they're all submerged. You'll need to soak them for at least 10 minutes. Now I'm going to reduce my raspberry puree a little bit just to get a more concentrated flavor. To do this, I just bring it to a boil and reduce it for about a minute. You can skip this part or you can reduce it more than I did. It's up to your preference on flavor and texture. I pulled the puree off of the stove, measured out my three ounces, and am now putting it back on the stove. This time I add in the lemon juice, caster sugar, and dextrose. I heat all of those on medium until the sugars are dissolved. Then I added in the raspberry powder and stirred it until it was blended in, which was a little difficult because it clumped up. I will make a note of this for you guys in the recipe, but what you'll actually want to do is whisk the raspberry powder into the sugar and add it together in the beginning. Once I got the raspberry powder mixed in well and all the sugar crystals were dissolved, I turned off the heat. Once the mixture stops boiling, wring out your gelatin sheets and add them in. Then just stir the mixture until all of the gelatin is dissolved. Next, pop your glucose in the microwave for just about 10 seconds to warm it up a little bit. Pour it directly into your mixing bowl, fit with the whisk attachment, and start mixing on low to medium. Now add in the raspberry mixture. You don't have to do this while it's mixing necessarily, I just did because I wanted to keep things moving and get a good blend in with the glucose. Once you have all of the raspberry mix added, Turn your mixer up to medium high and watch the mixture as it gets nice and fluffy and lightens in color.
For molded bonbons, you don't want to pipe the marshmallow until it cools to 28 degrees Celsius, so keep it mixing until you get close to that. When I checked it here, I think it was about 35 degrees Celsius. Once I get within a couple of degrees of 30, I turn the mixer down just a bit so it doesn't start to firm up too fast. Now it's around 30 and here's what my texture looks like. So it's ready to move to the bag. It drops a couple of degrees as you move it and lay it down on the counter. I do a final check before piping and it's about 27 degrees Celsius, so I'm good to go. I filled my bar molds about halfway full with the Malo. You can use it however you prefer, depending on if you want more or less with your other filling. To avoid dragging marshmallow up and out of the mold at the end of the bar, I do a quick swipe back in the opposite direction to break the marshmallow so I can quickly move to the next cavity. For my bonbons, I just do a nice fluffy dot in the center. If you stop putting pressure on the bag and then tap the top and quickly move to the next cavity, you can get a clean break. These marshmallows will hold a bit of their shape, but settle enough to be smooth and lose their peaks. If you don't use all of the filling, you can dust a piece of parchment paper with half cornstarch and half powdered sugar and pipe the rest into little circles. They settle into little discs. They kind of look like macaroons before baking and they are such a nice little shape and texture to eat. Once they set up, coat all of the outside with the starch and sugar blend. And if you want to, you can even dust them with some extra raspberry powder. Now I need to make my milk chocolate ganache, which is really easy to do. I'm using leftover tempered milk chocolate. Because I need this chocolate to melt from the heat of the cream, I need to quickly chop it down into smaller bits. Once the chocolate is chopped and ready, I just scald the cream. Scalding the cream is heating it to just before a boil. You'll know it's there when you see little bubbles start to form around the edge of the pot and some steam is coming off of the surface. If you want to verify with temperature, it'll be around 180 degrees Fahrenheit or about 83 degrees Celsius. Once you reach that, immediately pour it over the chocolate. I like to push all the chocolate below the surface of the cream and then you need to let it sit for just a couple minutes to start melting. After a few minutes pass, start stirring from the middle and watch the ganache come together. Once it's mixed, you can blend it with your stick blender to ensure a smooth emulsion. I like to pour it straight into my piping bag and let it cool down on the counter by rolling it around every so often. Once it's below 28 degrees Celsius, you're good to pipe it.
This is a very soft ganache and levels itself out really well. Because it's a bit runnier, you'll want to cut the hole in the piping bag pretty small. I made these fillings back to back and piped them one right after the other. Once the bonbons were full, I let them set up in my wine cooler at about 57 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 degrees Celsius overnight before capping. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you found it helpful. If you liked it, please like it down below and leave me a comment, it helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon, bye.